In this lesson, we'll discuss three ways on how glycolysis is regulated. The question reads, how is glycolysis regulated by each of the following enzymes? Starting with the first, we have hexokinase. It's important to note that glycolysis is a 10-step reaction that produces cellular energy from glucose in the absence of oxygen. Throughout the process, which happens to take place in the cytosol of the cell, it degrades the 6-carbon glucose molecule to two 3-carbon pyruvate molecules. In the very first reaction of glycolysis, phosphorylation takes place. This is where a phosphate group is transferred from ATP to glucose, forming glucose 6-phosphate. Also in this process, the dephosphorylation of ATP forms one molecule of ADP. The enzyme hexokinase is responsible for this reaction, and it is inhibited by high levels of glucose 6-phosphate. So when a lot of glucose 6-phosphate is formed, this eventually causes a negative feedback loop to stop the addition of more phosphate groups being added to glucose. Therefore, what stops hexokinase is glucose 6-phosphate. In the third reaction of glycolysis, another phosphorylation reaction takes place. This time, phosphate from ATP is transferred to fructose 6-phosphate, producing fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. As the name suggests, this molecule contains two phosphate groups. A second kinase enzyme called phosphofructokinase catalyzes this step through hydrolysis. This enzyme is inhibited by high levels of ATP and activated by high levels of ADP and AMP, an indication that energy needs to be replenished in the cell. Finally for C, pyruvate kinase. In reaction 10, which is the last reaction in glycolysis, phosphate groups from two phosphoenyl pyruvate molecules are transferred by pyruvate kinase to produce two pyruvates and two ATP molecules. High levels of ATP or acetyl-CoA, which is a molecule that's produced from pyruvate, inhibit pyruvate kinase, and this stops the formation of more pyruvate being formed. And there you have it, a quick discussion on how glycolysis is regulated.